What dances did the twin isosceles triangles excel at? The rhombus, of course. So now we're looking at isosceles and equilateral triangles. Now the basic anatomy of an isosceles triangle it, are the congruent sides. That's what makes it isosceles and those are called legs. And they'll normally have the congruent marks there. The vertex is the angle formed by the two legs. So you can see here B is the vertex angle in this triangle and Z is the vertex angle on this other triangle. Just because it's lying on its side doesn't mean it's the, not the vertex. The side opposite the vertex angle is the base. So I've got the base here and here. And then the base angles are the two congruent angles that share the base as a side. So angle A and C are base angles. Angle X and Y are base angles. So one of the uh, some of the triangle theorems we run across it are if two sides of a triangle are congruent, the angle then the angles opposite the sides are congruent. Now this makes sense based on what we did with angles opposite sides. Remember the largest angle is opposite the largest side and the smallest angle is opposite the smallest side. Well, if the sides are the same, then the angle should be the same. And then we have the converse which says if two angles of a triangle are congruent, then the sides opposite those angles are congruent. Again, pretty much saying the same thing, just in the other direction. Now in this example, we're going to go ahead and find Y. And all I told you is that this is an isosceles triangle with an angle of 34 degrees. I know these two legs are congruent, so the base angles are angle L and M. Now I can say Y plus Y plus 34 is going to be 180. Combine like terms, subtract 34 from both sides, and I get 2Y is 146. So Y is 73. Now uh, equilateral triangles also have corollaries. That is, if a triangle is equilateral, equal sides, um, if you speak Spanish, e, uh, lados iguales, equilateral. Do you see the connection in the word there? Then it is equiangular. So if it's equal sides, then the angles are equal. And if a triangle is equiangular, then it is equilateral. So in this problem, I'm going to find M. This is an equilateral triangle. All three sides are equal, which means all three angles are equal. If the angles are equal, 180 divided by 3 is 60 degrees. So I have to set this value here equal to 60. Then I can do some algebra, subtracting 6 from both sides. I get 54 is 3M, or M is 18. Uh, in this, uh, now looking at special segments for isosceles triangles, we're going to start with the vertex. So when we connect the vertex to the midpoint of the base, the segment is a median. One, because it's connected to the midpoint. Vertex to midpoint is a median. It's also an angle bisector. Since these two angles are congruent, let me go ahead and highlight that for you. Since this angle is congruent to this angle, and these two angles are 90 degrees, you could say by the third angle theorem that angle ABJ and angle CBJ are also congruent. So that has to be an angle bisector. It's also a perpendicular bisector. Uh, again, if we um, take this point as equidistant from A to B and B to C. So B is equidistant from A and C. That implies that it's on the perpendicular bisector of AC. Then it's since it's perpendicular here, that means it's an altitude because it's going through the vertex. So when we do this special segment through the vertex angle, it is all for the special segments. Now this is not true if the segment is going through one of the base angles instead of the vertex. So in this case, XS here, that's the median. So that's your midpoint right there. XT is the angle bisector and XU is the altitude. The perpendicular bisector would pass through S and it would basically go, pretend I could draw a straight line, straight up and down right there. So when you have the uh, special segments through the through a angle that is not the vertex angle, and in other words, one of the base angles, it's not necessarily going to be the same. 
Now, looking at equilateral triangles, any special draw segment drawn from any vertex will be the same segment. Basically, because you're creating an isosceles triangle right here, through any angle you create, you're cutting it into two 30-degree angles. So because all the angles equal ang are equiangular, there's no difference from one vertex to another. Mid-segments will never be the same as the median, the angle bisector, the altitude, because it doesn't have any endpoints on a vertex. There is a possibility it could be the same as a perpendicular bisector, but that would only be on a right triangle and in very special cases. So in this example for the table on your notes, we're going to classify the segment in each of the triangles. So I have triangle ABC here which has uh, legs AB and BC. I can see from the congruent marks that BD is congruent to DC. So D is a midpoint. So since BD, since D is a midpoint, this special segment right here is the median. On this next example, EFG, I have legs EF and FG and segment EH right here. Now, since it's creating a perpendicular angle, it's not bisecting it, and it is going through the vertex, this segment is an altitude. So it goes through the vertex, it's an altitude. Now finally, I've got an isosceles triangle, STU, legs ST and TU, and segment TV. So those are congruent. And since SV is congruent to VU, this is definitely the median. Now, uh, for some reason, I was missing my congruent marks right here, but it is an isosceles. So that means that it's also an altitude and a perpendicular bisector and an angle bisector. So for further reflection, can base angles of an isosceles triangle ever be obtuse? Think about that and justify your answer using a complete sentence.